The values of freedoms we cherish as Americans rest on our fundamental, fundamental commitment to the sanctity of human life. To diminish the value of one category of human life is to diminish us all. Those are the words of President Ronald Reagan in January 1984 when he made the proclamation for the first sanctity of human life day. He said, I call upon the citizens of this blessed land to gather on that day in homes and places of worship to give thanks for the gift of life and to reaffirm our commitment to the dignity of every human being and the sanctity of each human life. Since then, we have celebrated the sanctity of human life on the Sunday closest to the anniversary of Roe v. Wade. We celebrate and support the pregnancy centers that help the young women and men who face the crisis pregnancies, those who mentor them as they raise their children, and the peer counselors trying to reach those women who may choose abortion. But there is a side to this day that many don't see, think about, or even realize is there. There are thousands of women suffering from having chosen to have an abortion. They live in guilt, shame, and condemnation. The joy has left their lives. I know this because I was one of those women. Thirteen years ago, I chose to have an abortion for many different reasons, but mainly I thought it would fix everything. Instead, it left me empty and in complete emotional chaos. I didn't realize it, but in an effort to escape the pain of my choice to end my child's life, I turned to men, drugs, and alcohol. My marriage ended in divorce, and I had no relationship with my children. When Jesus rescued me from the life I was living, I still didn't acknowledge that part of my past. I knew he forgave me all my sins, but this one I kept hidden in my heart. When I was six weeks pregnant with Esther, I ended up in the hospital and they did an ultrasound. I got to see her heart beating. It floored me. You see, I was six weeks pregnant when I had my abortion. All that guilt, shame, and the deepest of all sorrow slammed into me in that hospital room. That was the turning point for me when I knew God was calling me to face this, yet I wasn't ready. I couldn't. I didn't want to tell God yet what I had done, even though I knew he saw what my secret sin was. Because of my abortion, I had a terrible time with Esther when she was a baby. I lived in constant fear that God would take her from me as a punishment. I couldn't and wouldn't let anyone else take her anywhere without me, even my husband Randy. I smothered her and tried to control every moment of her day to protect her. Finally, God led me to Life Choices Center. I was amazed to find out that there were other women who have had abortions, other women who had suffered from the same thing I was. At the time, neither my husband nor I even knew that I needed help. I didn't know or understand that the problems connected with my children had anything to do with my abortion. Through their Beyond the Choice program, I learned that freedom is possible. I was able to finally understand that God forgave me and wouldn't take Esther as a punishment for what I, for a sin he'd already forgiven me for. I no longer walk in the guilt and shame I once did, and God has begun restoring the relationships that were broken for so long. Because this study was so powerful in my life, I'm excited that Union Center is now offering the Beyond the Choice Bible Study to help you find healing if you've had an abortion and are not walking in the freedom God desires for us. The small group begins on Thursday, January 27th. There is more information on it in the Connections Catalog. I ask that you prayerfully seek the Lord for the courage to join this group. Trust me, I fully know and understand that fear in facing your abortion. But God is walking next to you, wanting to guide you to forgiveness and freedom. Union Center also supports Sanctity of Life Sunday by participating in Life Choices Baby Bottle Drive. I don't believe I'd be where I am today if it wasn't for Life Choices, and I really believe in the work they're doing. The Change for Life is a great way to support the center, so please stop by at the table on Main Street to get your bottle to fill with your spare change. If you'd like to see what other programs Life Choices has to offer, or to see other areas your donations also help support, you can stop by their center today in Binghamton from 1 to 3 for their open house, where you can also come to the dessert reception on March 11th at First Baptist Church in Johnson City to participate in fun interactive activities, hear client testimonies, and see what the center has to offer. To those women sitting here today that my words are reaching, my final plea to you is, if you've had an abortion, seek healing. If you're facing a crisis pregnancy or someone you love is, 
Please seek counsel from your pastor or a Christian counselor. Thank you.